In this video, I will talk about the difference between dystrophic and metastatic calcification. The easiest way to approach this topic is to simply compare and contrast the two. This is not as complicated as your lecturers or the exam writers make it sound. So with dystrophic calcification, we get calcium deposition in previously damaged tissues, whereas in metastatic calcification, we get calcium deposition in otherwise normal tissues. So in your dystrophic calcification, you're going to see that calcium being deposited in necrotic tissue, hyaluronized scars, granulomas, abscesses, infarcts, that kind of thing. Again, the tissue has to have been previously damaged before the onset of the calcification. In metastatic calcification, because that calcium is being deposited in otherwise normal tissues, we tend to see this in interstitial areas. Specifically, we see it in the interstitial areas of organs like the kidney, the lungs, the gastric mucosa, and blood vessels. The reason that we predominantly see metastatic calcification in kidney, lungs, gastric mucosa, and blood vessels is because these are areas or organs or tissues that have a tendency to lose acid quickly. So remember, I'm going to talk about some pathophysiology now. Anytime you rapidly lose acid, you're obviously increasing your pH level. And increased pH levels promote calcium deposition. So in the kidney, lung, gastric mucosa, and blood vessels, you have that interstitial area that has a tendency to lose acid, increasing pH, promoting an environment for calcium deposition. Again, calcium deposition has a tendency to occur in areas of increased pH. So going back to dystrophic calcification, we see that the calcium deposition occurs in previously damaged tissues. So the etiologies that you want to associate dystrophic calcification with, and I didn't write this on the slide, but I'll kind of just talk through it now, is the following. So you want to be on the lookout for arteriosclerosis. You also want to think about different types of liquefactive necrosis or any type of abscess. Remember fat necrosis, which can occur in various conditions, such as pancreatitis. You want to think about things like comedocarcinomas or systemic sclerosis, Crest syndrome, dermatomyositis. These are types of autoimmune connective tissue diseases where you do see dystrophic calcification. Also, any type of granuloma, you want to think about dystrophic calcification as well. And lastly, some infective etiologies, things like CMV, rubella, tuberculosis, or toxoplasmosis. These are all different types of infectious diseases that are associated with damaging tissues and then causing dystrophic calcifications. So not an all-inclusive list, but just wanted to throw some things out so that if you see it on test day, you can associate it with dystrophic calcification. Again, if you're not sure what the etiology is, just remember if it's a process that's damaging tissue and then you have previously damaged tissue, you can just guess that it's dystrophic calcification. In the case of metastatic calcification, you want to associate that with things like primary hyperparathyroidism, bone demineralization, increased bone resorption. So anything that's going to increase your bone resorption, such as uh, bony metastasis or Paget's disease or multiple myeloma, that is all going to cause hypercalcemia in the setting of metastatic calcification. The other things you want to associate it with are kidney failure or secondary hyperparathyroidism. You also can associate this with patients who are undergoing dialysis. So anything that causes hyperphosphatemia can also cause metastatic calcification. Again, this will typically occur in the interstitial areas of the kidney, lung, gastric mucosa, or blood vessel. So if they are giving you an etiology that falls into one of those four categories, you can guess metastatic calcification. Now let's move on and talk about calcium levels. This is pretty simple. In dystrophic calcification, your calcium levels are going to be normal. But in metastatic calcification, your calcium levels are going to be elevated. And this is a free point on test day if they give you a calcium level. So really, really understand this. In dystrophic calcification, 
the area of deposition is localized, where in metastatic calcification, the area of deposition is widespread. Now, these are really all of the high yield points that you need to know for the differences in the ability to compare and contrast dystrophic versus metastatic calcification. And I do have a little mnemonic here to help you out if this is not clear enough. For dystrophic calcification, we're going to focus on the letter D. So dystrophic calcification occurs in damaged tissues. You maintain your day-to-day -day calcium levels, which in other words, day-to-day -day meaning normal calcium levels. And it has a very defined or localized area of deposition. So dystrophic equals damaged equals day-to-day -day calcium levels, i.e. normal, and defined, i.e. localized area of deposition. And if we compare that to metastatic calcification, in metastatic cal calcification, that's going to occur in maintained tissues, meaning otherwise normal. And both your calcium levels and your area of deposition are going to be multiplied, i.e. multiplied calcium levels are elevated and multiplied areas of deposition are widespread. So dystrophic equals damaged day-to-day -day and defined. Metastatic equals well-maintained tissues with multiplied calcium levels and multiplied areas of deposition. That is the difference between dystrophic and metastatic calcification.